Hello, good morning and welcome. Very David Frost. Um, thank you for taking the time to attend um, a high level webinar for focusing on subject matter we touched on at this year, this year's user groups in uh, towards the end of January and March. It's something we're seeing more and more of um, in both the financial and payment um, marketplace and, and financial technical industry as a whole, where we're seeing the crossover of both payment information, process, interaction with your customers and the additional checks that are required to ensure you are placing yourselves in a, in a protected position and you are doing your due diligence based on um, a very rapidly changing framework of law that's applied to an expanding group of merchants. So as I say, today's session is all about that. My name is Wayne Campbell. I've worked for Pay360 now for over two decades, and, and this is interesting me a, a great deal because I've really focused historically on payments, reconciliation, integration, the dreaded PCI DSS, but the complexity and the nuance involved with the way that you as an organization, whether a housing organization or a local authority are interacting with your tenants and citizens and looking at welfare benefits, tax credits, you know, local services, assets, debt recovery, evidence based data that can impact on the way that you interact with those individuals. And that at a high level is what we're going to focus on today within today's webinar. So in the first instance, I'm going to introduce my colleague, um, Russell Wilkinson, and he's going to take you through a few examples and demonstrations today on how the solutions and platform can help within your environment. So on that, over to Russell. Thanks, Wayne, or should I say uh, David Frost uh, for the, uh, the words there. Uh, yeah, and as I said, uh, my name is Russell. Uh, I'm in the pre-sales team here at Pay360. And uh, today, uh, as Wayne has mentioned, we're going to give you uh, an overview uh, of some use cases within of identity verification in the public sector. Just before I crack on, uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, this is a Teams live event. Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, used Teams much in the past, uh, if you if you if ask any questions, if you wiggle your mouse, uh, you'll see uh, a chat box, uh, uh, the Q&A box at the top. So any questions, please feel free to ask or as in they, they can be asked whenever throughout the presentation um, and we can try and run through some at the end or offline as well. So <clears throat> for today's session, um, like I said, we're going to cover off a quick introduction to uh, with some quite alarming stats uh, and headlines uh, from uh, the last year uh, with regards to fraud and uh, theft uh, within the public sector. We're then going to move on to uh, some use cases. So th this is, uh, as Wayne mentioned, uh, an evolution from the, the events that we held kind of January, February time. Uh, and it, it's more to it's sort of open people's eyes a bit to the, the other areas within a public um, kind of local authority, public sector that may also carry out checks. So whilst there may be people on the call who are very much focused on maybe say revenues, uh, revs and vends, there might be some housing people on the call, there may be people involved in applications, uh, all of which need some kind of vetting, some kind of uh, checking on a person or an organisation to make sure that they're legitimate. So you guys don't unwittingly become victims of things like uh, money laundering and, and financial crime. We're then going to have a quick introduction uh, to the Optimize Verify platform. Uh, just a couple of slides, it's uh, not death by PowerPoint today. And then I'm pleased to uh, be able to say we're going to play, um, we also have some demonstration videos at the end uh, on four kind of key checks that we, um, we've kind of seen of kind of relevance uh, within the public sector and some of the functionality. So you can actually get to see the platform in action. To start off with, uh, this is uh, came out. Um, it's a stat or kind of a, a, a kind of a comment that came out in January this year. It's from an independent report and it was published on the BBC. Uh, but the figures are ultimately that fraud against the public sector, including things like benefits, tax credits, and student loan fraud, is estimated to cost between thirty-one and forty-eight billion pounds a year. And if that is 
no, if that's right, the higher figure is kind of larger than the UK's annual defence budget, which is quite a scary number when you think about that. Some of the headlines that we saw last year, uh, obviously a big focus was on the coronavirus uh, checks because uh, local authorities had to suddenly um, move from uh, not being able to see people you know, face to face, but very much um, had to pay out money. Uh, they were kind of ordered by central government to pay out you know, hardship funds, COVID payments to businesses. Uh, and all of this was had to done almost like immediately, right, make the payment now. So there's lots of examples you know, where you know, potentially like furlough for the reckon potentially was at three and a half billion pounds was paid out uh, to companies that basically did not employ or did not exist or didn't employ as many people as they said they did. Uh, there's an example you can see in the middle. Uh, my name was used to steal a government COVID loan. Uh, that's some poor chap called Ian, I think his name was, um, who basically got contacted by his local authority asking him how his business is going to pay back the £40,000 loan that he'd given. Uh, Ian didn't have a business, somebody basically stole his details and then created a business in his name and then used that business to make a claim. And, and even now, um, there are going to be checks, things like um, post event assurance checks, uh, where authorities may be asked to actually do a, a retrospective check you know, to make sure the monies that were paid out, did they actually go out to businesses that had were legitimate and the bank accounts were legitimate as well. Just going to move on to the use case um, section uh, now. Uh, I'm going to run through uh, again uh, different areas within a local authority or within uh, the public sector as a whole. Now, there may be some uh, housing association colleagues on the on the call today. Uh, and I'll give you sort of an idea to get, get the brain working in terms of different areas within the sector where identity verification is used. So one of the key areas uh, that we've seen um, are, would be within uh, REVs and VENs departments, um, or even even sort of like council tax uh, as, as well, where lots of um, different checks where historically, where all, all of these uh, applications would have been vetted you know, with face-to-face -face meetings and they could bring along documentation uh, and you, you'd see the person you, you just carry out in person in, in your meeting rooms, in your offices. Now we all want to be back there, but hopefully maybe some of you even are now. But how things have had to work is that there's been a massive rise where people have been uh, applying for, like it could be um, housing housing benefit, it could be rents, it could be childcare, it could be a single person discount, it could be lots of different people you're now interacting with where historically you wouldn't have done, but as their circumstances have changed you now due to the pandemic uh, and the economic uh, downturn, that you are having to now deal with more sort of citizens or, or more individuals, and you historically haven't actually had to deal with them in the past. So whilst on one database you may have a record of them you know, paying council tax, but they, they, they may appear in a completely different database now applying for some benefit or, or, or discount. And the types of check there where, where you, you're basically identifying firstly, is the person who they say they are and are they actually registered at the address and, and key checks uh, again the bank account where they want their benefit paid into or, or the loan or the, the, the service that you're offering uh, if it's financial uh, it's making sure again that it's a legitimate bank account and is actually linked to that individual. The next area uh, is aimed around COVID payments. So whilst um, thankfully we, we are nearing the end um, of, of this, there are still um, benefit business grants and benefits that have, uh, are being paid out or have been paid up. And there are still uh, occasions where uh, I believe local authorities have been um, get checking individuals that if they're forced to self-isolate uh, um, um, and then there were, there were funds, I believe there was a fund um, kind of back in last year where it's about £500 was being paid out to uh, individuals um, if they were forced to uh, isolate, but, um, but also they, they needed the income. Uh, and again, so there are lots of um, kind of checks, uh, again, you, uh, like I just mentioned, where you need to verify the individual and verify that the, the bank details that are needed are actually valid. And I touched upon earlier uh, about things like the, the P, the, the post event assurance uh, type check where an authority um, like I said, will be asked to just, just do a, a, a sense check, you know, just, just to make sure that the information that was provided and uh, did the money go out to the right people, the right businesses, and, and just making sure they're okay. Again, on the COVID side, uh, there is the, uh, the business side. So um, there were cases last year where, um, I mean, you touched on was it three and a half billion pounds was paid out on furlough payments. Uh, that there's, 
uh, it's uh, anecdotal stories of um, people this, um, either setting up businesses or using legitimate business details uh, to make a claim, like walking up the high street, you can get a business name, you can get the address, you can find their information on, on company's house, uh, and, and then just using a fake bank account to make a claim. Um, again, sadly, that was very prevalent. Uh, so there, there, there were some of the, the scenarios that, that we used last year, especially on, on the COVID side. The next section uh, was look at is actually housing. Um, housing uh, themselves, I mean, uh, there's an element of um, it, it within the housing teams where uh, in the local authority side, where they'll be carrying out uh, identity checking and vetting of an individual uh, to make sure that they're, 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 they're relevant to be, to be passed on to an association. But, uh, but housing will also need to carry out um, a, a variety of checks, you know, whether it is um, if it's on the private side now making sure that people uh, can uh, are again who they say they are um, are they uh, on the kind of the global sanctions or politically exposed people's list if uh, and again vetting as if they were an estate agent as if they were a letting agent uh, you carry out checks and identity checks and, and making sure that the people can actually afford uh, the rent and are actually going to make payment or again buy the property Another big side in housing, especially in metropolitan areas, is uh, there's an issue around subletting. And there are certain checks out there where you can check, no, it's called like tenancy checks. So uh, where an association or uh, 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 local authority may have a list of people who they think they have, uh, their addresses or their properties, um, you can actually run checks just to make sure, just to match it together to find out who's actually registered at that address. Because uh, there is a big issue uh, anecdotally in London uh, around um, the subletting of properties. So there are checks that you can put in place there, uh, again, just to make sure that people who are actually living in your, um, who you think are living in your properties are actually who they say they are, or indeed are the real people. Taking a slightly different uh, tack, um, all organisations in the public sector, private sector as well, uh, will have an element of a procurement department uh, finance team, and they will be paying out money to suppliers uh, for services that, that, that have been um, kind of ordered. Now, it could be like universities, it could be housing associations, it could be you know, public sector in terms of it could be contract leaders, it could be maintenance, it could be anything like to do with the infrastructure, keeping the infrastructure going of the local authority. And these are the checks that you can carry out here. There are kind of know your business checks, KYB checks. And these are checks that you can put in place, uh, again, mostly to make sure that the, the organisation that um, is hoping to be a supplier or is supplying the service to you is legitimate. It's not a shell company. It is actually a, a, an active organisation. And the type of checks you can actually do uh, is also matching things like the bank account. So uh, if you are going to be making payments to uh, an organisation, these payments will tend to be bank to bank transfers. And again, it's making sure that the, the bank account details that have been provided are linked to that organisation. Because you don't want to be unwittingly uh, paying money into a bank account from somebody completely different, not linked to the business. Uh, and again, potentially a victim of money laundering. Another area uh, within local authorities, this is uh, slightly uh, off, off column, the, the, the revenue benefit council tax side, uh, are people who apply for some kind of, um, no, like a parking, no, um, disabled parking, uh, no, uh, bus pass, no, free bus pass uh, li uh, licenses and taxi licenses as well. Uh, lots of different areas where people will apply for a service. And again, there, there needs to be some level of identity verification. Uh, again, just to make sure, you know, again, that the person who um, is uh, applying for bus pass is, you know, is that person, are they old enough? Uh, again, uh, is the uh, disabled parking, are they actually linked to the address? I guess more importantly, uh, I think like on the taxi side, uh, again, it's just making sure that the person uh, who is applying is who they say they are. But you may also want to carry out uh, things like a, a driving license check. Now, is it a legitimate driving license? Can they actually drive? Uh, because sadly, there have been cases where people uh, may may have a license, or they're posing, or they're, they're posing as a taxi driver, and that could lead to, you know, if they, it could lead to a crash, could lead to an accident, or something far worse, which sadly we have seen some instances of in the news. And 
another area, um, just the last area for the, for the use cases, is, uh, is trace checks. So these are checks that are pretty carried out in you know, um, recovery teams. It could be financial recovery, it may be a dedicated fraud team, and, and even what's come within the, the council tax teams as well, uh, where basically um, you, people who owe you money. Uh, you can use systems in place where they may have moved house, owe, owing council tax or rent. Uh, they may have just own money for a, a service or that, that they haven't paid for and they've moved. So basically they may have moved out of the area. Uh, it, may, it may be unintentional or they can literally, they've, they've gone off the radar because they owe money. And there are systems in place where you can, you can they call, like, trace systems and you can then basically try and and basically find the individual so you can then kind of work out if, if there's a propensity to pay, if there's a propensity to actually get in contact with them and give, give your guys a chance, your collections guys, uh, a way of finding out where they are now so you can then have your own workflows in place to try and get that money off the individual who owes you. So even if they've moved out of the borough, uh, they will have simple, the simple fact is they owe you money. So instead of having to uh, maybe write off the debt, uh, pass it off to a debt recovery agency, there are tools in place where you, uh, you kind of as the authority internally, will be able to um, um, do those checks as well uh, and, and, and kind of track down the money and the individual. Next up, uh, I'm going to give a quick introduction to the optimised um, suite of products. Uh, this is a uh, fraud engine, a risk engine that's been built by ourselves, uh, and it's kind of covering um, kind of two core areas uh, within um, within kind of fraud and identity verification. Uh, we're, we're focusing today, obviously, on identity uh, KYC uh, no customer checks. So the focus is going to be on the verified section. Uh, we also have a transactional fraud engine, uh, which is based around uh, you know, real time rules and managing of these and, and like link analysis. So you can really get into the weeds. Uh, and whilst uh, obviously Pay360 we're really conscious that um, transactional fraud probably isn't that big within um, the public sector, uh, there may still be cases of it. So there is a tool at hand uh, which enables you to, to have a look. And if you want further information on that, you can either contact your account manager or if you look at the bottom of the screen, we are um, on the G Cloud. Uh, GCloud version 12 uh, and both the optimized as a whole uh, with the transactional side but also the verified platform is there and there's full information and background information on the platforms for you to have a look at as well. So focusing on verify, um, what we <laughs> what we've really got, it, it's ultimately a data vendor aggregation uh, platform. So in the public sector, uh, the main players are the likes of the experience of this world, you know, TransUnion, Equifax, and probably GB Group here in the UK. And they are the, the main sources for data and checks, like I said, within, within the UK. Uh, they have some international offerings as well, but they are the, 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 kind of the, the key suppliers to the market. And, and whilst many of you uh, on the call or may have some departments who already have to an Experian or TransUnion, uh, the key thing about Verify is that they're all available in one place. Uh, so you can call out to multiple data vendors, uh, carry out a series of checks, but through one place, one integration, and it's all there for you in one of the kind of one portal as well, one reporting portal. So if that's a key kind of power of the verified platform. Other data vendors that, that we have uh, add kind of, kind of value add, almost like niche niche types checks, but to help help kind of um, enhance the, the checks that you're carrying out. So, for example, you can see on the uh, the bottom left hand side of the, the slide, uh, I've mentioned like the likes of TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Um, there are other players in the market, the likes of W2. Uh, they also carry out identity checking, and we get to use them for one of their services based around um, PEPs and so politically exposed people and sanctions checking. Yeah, because this platform is used uh, widely uh, within the, 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 the private sector, you know, financial services, um, e-commerce, retail, uh, gaming, um, amongst others. And we feel, as, as it's widely used there, that we want to kind of really bring it into uh, into the public sector as well, because there's definitely um, kind of a, a, a market for it. And again, like I said, all the key data vendors are in one place, which is brilliant. Uh, other devices and there, there are things like iOvation. Um, iOvation is great for device tracking. So what that really does is if somebody is um, applying or somebody's trying to apply for a benefit, uh, you can also make sure, firstly, uh, through other, making sure, again, are they who they say they are, are they where they say they are? But if they may have sold them some perfectly legitimate details, things like an iOvation device check will actually tell you where the device is. 
And again, that's key um, just to make sure that people aren't fraudulently uh, applying uh, for a benefit, maybe a financial benefit from yourselves. But if they do succeed, they're ultimately taking money out of the system. It's money that you guys don't have to invest in and give to people, invest in services that they actually really need. And another one just to just to throw in is email age. Uh, a key um, kind of tactic of anyone who is applying for a uh, or, or using fraudulent details is that they will use generally legitimate details, uh, you know, like name, address, community, and date of birth, but they will create um, an account or apply for a service using a fake email address. And it's very simple to do. I mean, I, I can go on, you can create a Gmail uh, account, a Google Mail account uh, within like, 30 seconds, something like that. Doesn't, doesn't take long. There's loads of different uh, sort of hot mails, different ways that you can actually quickly set up uh, a, a, an account. And people at email age, what you can do, you can really actually check how old an email is and also what country it was registered in. So if somebody is applying for uh, a benefit or a service, you can also um, see how old is the email address that they're using. And then based on that, if it is quite new, it might just prompt you to ask for a, an additional piece of information, uh, maybe an additional document or to, uh, an extra level of checking uh, to make sure, again, the person is who they say they are and it isn't someone just using their details. So you can ask them questions only they would know. Uh, a bit like 3D secure in the in, in the payment world. In terms of the types of check, <coughs> excuse me, that are available, um, the, as I said, we, we, we have we looked at lots of different data vendors, so there are lots of different types of checks that, that they run uh, as services. So you, you can see on the screen, I'm not going to read through all of them, um, but there are things that we've touched upon that like email profiling. Uh, you can do uh, database cleansing, like uh, address cleansing, again, to make sure, uh, again, checking uh, the tenancy checks. Now, are the people who you think are living in your properties or think are in your area, are they, again, are they who are they there? There are other checks, uh, things like mortality checks. Uh, there's a you know, database called the Halo database, uh, again, where you can check to find out if somebody is applying for a service. Uh, again, somebody may have used stolen goods or stolen kind of um, information. Again, you're just making sure that that person is who they say they are. They're not someone who may have, may have like, recently passed away uh, or, or sadly touching on COVID there again. But um, there have been examples where it could, things like the electoral role uh, aren't updated in real time, but things like the, like the mortality databases, the, the, the death registers are updated every day. So that's something that you can check against, again, just to make sure that somebody hasn't stolen someone's details and are using it to apply for a service or a benefit or some kind of financial gain from your authority or your housing association. Other types of checks, uh, we've touched upon you know, bank account validation, uh, that's key if you are paying out money to anyone. Um, know your customer and know your business checks. So again, just making sure that the people who you are interacting with, uh, as I said uh, right at the start, you're having to do it di digitally at the moment, um, do it face to face. So that is something that um, no, it, the, the checks are there and they're very powerful checks. I'm actually gonna shove some of these in the video uh, that we're gonna be playing shortly. Other ones include, we've mentioned uh, PEPs and sanctions, uh, there's document verification, biometrics. There's, there's lo lots of, kind of tools there that are available. And again, uh, many of these are uh, available from the data vendors. Uh, and as I said, it's all kind of in one place on, on the Verify platform. So now I'm going to play a, uh, a video um, and please note it's not too long uh, and we're going to run over some uh, some of the, the key areas, uh, key um, checks that, that, that we've seen uh, that are carried out by local authorities. Uh, and so we've got four examples we're going to play for you today. Uh, the first one, I believe, is a uh, know your customer and bank check. So that, that's where we're checking to make sure that the uh, the, the customer information, the cable, uh, they're actually at the address where they say they are, and obviously that they're also at the um, uh, the bank account details are correct. We're doing a similar check for a business, so that could be a business applying for a grant or, or some kind of um, business loan. Uh, again, checking that's a legitimate business, but also the bank details are there. Uh, we're going to do a deeper uh, know your business check. Uh, so again, so talking some relatively basic information, you'll be able to see uh, the type of the, the depth of the information that can come back to give you the confidence that the, the business who is applying for that service, again, is who they say. It is a legitimate business that you want to partner with or you want to do business with or offer a service to. And the last check is actually a quick demonstration of the batch functionality. So we'll, we'll upload the batch. Uh, it will carry out um, a, a know your customer check, a KYC check. And this example goes out to, I think, about three or four different data vendors on one check. 
and it's a multi-stage check as well. So you, you'd be able to get, get a, a flavor of how quickly and how powerful the platform is. So just a quick intro there. Here you go. I said, so first check is a know your customer and bank check. So here uh, you can see the verified platform. Uh, just quickly, the platform can be accessed via an API, and so it can be linked into your systems or your platforms, and you can fire across a check via an API. Uh, and also, uh, this can mimic, or this can be used by call center staff or people in the office who have received maybe a paper application, or, or, or this could be part of an online application. So here, um, they're typing in the uh, basic details of name, the individual, you know their bank details that have been supplied, and we're going to check the address as well. So we're doing a quick kind of postcode check. It gives us an option. So again, just scrolling down, that they find the uh, the address of the individual that's been provided. Again, this could be in real time. There's somebody in the contact center. It's running the check, and it'll come back with a scorecard. So you get every check gets a scorecard, and you can see further information as well. So if you wanted to dive deeper, not just with pass and fail. If you scroll down, you can see here that the sort code and bank account were matched, and also it has actually in the background done a, a know your customer check as well. If the customer or the person making the application is actually providing or trying to use fake bank details, so they're using legitimate details, and I name and address, but they provide fake information, this has failed because whilst it's, um, it's carried out as a customer check, it's actually failed on the bank side. So it's uh, the bank account is not valid, it's not linked to the individual, so that means that it's a fraudulent claim, and that will give you a chance to, to, uh, to query that individual. Next up, we've got a, um, a commercial bank check. So this is very similar to the, uh, the KYC check that we've just carried out. Uh, so this is again where this is somebody, uh, a business that could be uh, applying for some kind of a code grant payment, like furlough payments. And again, there's relatively basic information that they're, that they're passing in. So they're typing in their, you know, their, their name, account details. Next up, they will check out their, their business address. And so they're typing the, the details there. Like I said, this is the, the online portal. This is the portal version, but this can mimic. This can be embedded into your uh, web forms that you have on your on, on your application forms that you have today, uh, so it can just sit behind your existing kind of um, systems and platforms. Just in here, uh, he's typing his company name and number, and then he'll be able to run the check in just a second. And this will go out to, as you can see on the screen there, this is a commercial uh, Experian bank visit check. Uh, and this will go out to buy, buy the verified platform to Experian and it will come back with uh, the result. And in this case, it's passed. And you can see here that it's uh, it's checked the, the name address the business. And there's some other rich data that comes back as well. So it's relatively basic that we put in. If you scroll down again, you can see a bit more about the, the matches in terms of the, the bank checking. Uh, again, information about the, the person making the check. This check is uh, the Know Your Business, the KYB check, uh, and this um, uh, goes out to another one of the data vendor partners that we support. Uh, and uh, this actually, um, again, you'll see we're providing relatively basic information about the person, uh, providing a business bank account. Uh, it's also uh, the account number. It will also supply uh, the business address. Uh, and again, similar to the, the commercial bank check, it will come back, um, um, it will do a similar check again on the company name, uh, name and number. But this, this is where we want to find out a lot more deeper information. So this is where we want to find out about um, the credit rating, uh, who the directors are. Uh, is this a business that we are confident, do we have a level of confidence that, that, that this organisation is firstly legitimate, but also someone we actually want to do business with? Again, it's going out to Credit Safe. Again, this is a real time check and it's passed, which is good to know that uh, Pay360 is a, uh, a valid organisation. Uh, just a bit of confidence for you guys there. Uh, and again, you scroll down and you see the depth of information that is available uh, just in terms of you know, com company addresses, previous owners, current directors, past directors. Um, it's, there's lots and lots of information that you can get on the organ or sort of potential customer, uh, potential partner to yourself. So again, you can see lots of different information about financial reports as well. 
And the last check that we're going to run today uh, is a batch check. Uh, so uh, this uh, batch check is uh, available on the platform. Uh, you can check, uh, I think, uh, about two or 300,000 checks in one go. It may even be more than that. So what you do, you create uh, your batch. Uh, you type in the, the name of the, uh, the, the file that you want to check. You also select the profile you want to run it against. And do you want it to run immediately when you upload it? So as you can see, there's a download template button. Uh, so every profile has its own template of what information we need. But here, if we're running this one, it's just a simple drag and drop exercise into the file. You upload the file and this is now going to run. So this will go out to, I think this one, like I said earlier, is about three or four different uh, data vendors uh, running on the same check and it's firing out. And again, you can see that that's now complete. And if I want to see what actually happened within the check, that that's the the file there so I can go into any of the any of the checks that we've done here on the KYC check and I can see it with the results so you can see it's a pass and you can see here it's, it's done various stages it's done a, a, a three stage check you now on the are they who they say they are are they alive and also a PEPs and sanctions check as well and again as it says on the screen if you have any information you want to follow come to us uh, your account manager at pay360 or come to the website and we'd be more than happy to discuss this in a bit bit more detail uh, about uh, today uh, any other sort of sector uh, your own department within the organization but also any area uh, within your local authority or your housing association or any of the university uh, colleague um, people on the call today um yeah do you have any questions and with that i'm going to pass you back to wayne and say firstly thank you very much for attending today uh, i hope you found it useful and again if there's anyone any friends uh, colleagues that, who, who may come across or work in any of the departments we've touched upon you now whether it's you no know, housing uh, benefit claims uh, council tax and any different kind of department please get in touch pass on pass on the video and we'll be more than happy to have a conversation with you thank you russell really really good informative session and i i learned something new every day <clears throat> including the fact that the Microsoft Teams platform uh, was upgraded last week, which meant the <laughs> option for Q&A is now a separate configurable tick box. So unfortunately for all of our attendees, the Q&A feature has been turned off. But please, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, reach out to us um, either directly to Russell, that's russell.wilkinson at capita.com or myself, wayne.campbell at capita.com. And I'm sure today, hopefully you found the session really, really informative. Each instance and example that Russell gave really gives your business the opportunities to identify fraud uh, and errors <clears throat> assess eligibility for services that, that your citizens or customers may be you know, applying for. Um, if you get questions from an investigations team, it puts you in a position where you can inform them based on what you know about the customers that you're dealing with. It even gives you, you know, the information you possibly would need to, to chase and or collect outstanding debt. There are so many examples of where what we see as what will become a business as usual task is delivered and facilitated using this aggregated platform that allows you to reach out to multiple data points rather than having to deal with you know, tens of individual vendors from a single interface. And that interface can be applied at, at any point within an operational workflow. So that, that workflow could be self-service online on the internet. You have a citizen signing up for a service, you know, a, a taxi driver applying for you know, a certificate or a badge, and you have possibly a limitation on where those drivers live. And he, if he's going through the self-service option to see if he qualifies and he's inputting all his details, it will automatically stop the process and save time. His and yours. And there are hundreds of other examples where you can drop these processes into what you're doing manually at the moment, just to automate the whole process, ensure you're doing it correctly, but for all of the, the legal frameworks that are being put in place at the moment for organizations such as yourselves, but protecting your organization and protecting your citizens' data and process as well. 
So please, if you have any more questions, contact myself or us, reach out directly to your account manager and we can have a one to one session where we can look at your individual scenarios and show you how we can simplify that process and put you in a position where you are a protected organization. So on that, I will say goodbye. We'll probably see you again over the next few months as we've got a, a number of other events um, coming up on different subjects uh, and you will be receiving uh, invites to those from your account managers as well. Please have a great day. It's nearly the weekend. We're not far off. Uh, think about your well-being. All the best to yourselves and your families and we'll see you again really soon. Bye bye now.